American in Italy to another. Our very own Luis Miguel Echegaray caught up with Venezia midfielder Gianluca Busio earlier on today. Take a listen. Tanner Tessman, obviously, your, your teammate, he joined a few weeks before you did. Is it comforting to you that you have another American around? Does that help a little bit? Yeah, obviously it helps, you know, having somebody who, who's young, you know, my age and, and from the MLS too also, not just American, but from the MLS, it, it helps, uh, you know, it helps you settle in a lot easier. You have somebody who's, you know, going through the same same problems as you and who's there with you through everything. So uh, I think, uh, you know, it helps me a lot. And also, I, you know, I think I'm helping him. And But uh, here in Venice, I think a lot of the players speak English very well and a lot of the staff. So they made it easy and it was a smooth transition for me. Yeah, a very multicultural squad as well, Venezia. Um, we talked about also four Americans, Brian Reynolds, Weston McKinney. Do you guys have a WhatsApp group? Do you talk about <laughs> Americans in Italy group? <laughs> no, nah, I think we'll start one soon. I think uh, uh, I, don't, I don't talk to Weston that much. I, you know, he's a little older and he's been there, been here longer. But, uh, you know, Brian, uh, he's he's came to Venice a couple a couple of weeks ago. To He's friends with Tanner, so we all hung out. So uh, I think eventually we'll get there. That full interview coming out later today on the K Galazzo podcast with our very own Luis Miguel Lechegaray and our Jimmy Conrad. They bring you the latest headlines and stories from around the football world. Plus, Jimmy always on top of the game with his wagering picks and winning picks prediction. God status confirmed, as he likes to say. Download and subscribe to the K Galazzo podcast today to enjoy. So let's just pick up on that interview then. Lucha, I want to start with you because you moved to Liverpool from Spain. I mean, what are some of the challenges of moving to a different country and not only getting used to a brand new team, but a totally different culture as well? Yeah, Bobby, exactly. And and I, I, I wanted to to hear from, from uh, Reynolds about the, the question of... Uh, of Jimmy asking him about how he deals with the situation of playing when he's away, about having someone around, someone who can you, you can trust, you can talk. Because on these days, we've been talking a lot about mental health and how uh, it can be very dangerous for some athletes, not only in football side. But it's true that when you move to another country to be away from your family, from your friends, uh, if you are playing regularly, of course, football balance a little bit your lifestyle because, of course, it's not the food that you normally have. It's not the weather that you normally have in your country. For me, it was very tough because it was not the sun <laughs> over there. But uh, at the end, it's everything uh, goes on the side of football. If you are playing, nothing happens because your head is focused on the game. You play it every weekend. You rest. You, 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 you talk with the family about how is the, the, the team going. But if you are not playing, and I know teammates who were struggling so much because the, the, the balance of your life goes very down and you don't feel well, you want to leave the country, you want to leave and go back to your friends, to your mates and, and the family. So not easy to deal with this kind of thing. It's very difficult and sometimes we forget about this. You train only for two, three hours during the day. The rest of the day, you will go time to think about it. And, is the, and if the things are not going well in the dressing room or in the games, the head is not helping you. So you have to be very careful with that. I'm going to pick up from the question that you asked Poppy originally because it's very, very difficult moving from one culture, one country, one language to something that's completely the opposite. You know, for many people, including myself, it was a dream to go play in another country, to learn another language. Uh, similar to Brian right there, he wanted to go and learn another language. That was huge to me. Um, and very, very important also recognizing that you've also got to try and find a way to be accepted into that culture, into that locker room um, with the guys, what they do off the field and uh, making sure that you, you learn the culture even going to the store uh, and restaurants as you can clearly hear from Brian Reynolds as well. It's very important being able to order because there's a certain respect that comes your way when you speak their language. So for me it was very, very important. Uh, initially when I first went to Germany after obviously it being a dream of mine to go play in Germany, um, I knew that Everybody spoke English well if they were under the age of maybe 40. They spoke perfect English. My locker room was incredible. Everyone spoke English to me. So I thought I'm not even going to need to learn another language here. I can go play two, three, four years here as long as I want to and never have to pick up the German language. But then when we started losing games, the coach pulled me out of games, pulled me out of practice and put me into German lessons four hours every single day for one month until I was fluent. And then afterwards, you know why he did that? 
so that he could actually get after me in games, shout at me, tell me what I was doing wrong, give me compliments, but it was the best decision he made because it improved my lifestyle and obviously it showed a lot of respect to the German people that I was willing to learn their language and willing to learn a lot more about them and it really helps you out there on the field when you can speak a language, you can understand a language because obviously you're a bit more accepted inside that locker room and out on the pitch, it's great. Yeah, I went to uh, Poland and played for Lech Poznan, and I'll raise my hand and say that I never learned Polish ever because that language is very difficult to learn. I also learned that their food is terrible, with all due respect to all my Polish <laughs> friends out there. But what I also learned is that they have zero respect for American players. They don't think we can play. They don't think we understand the game. And I had to learn how to get thicker skin and had some players try to spit on me or punch me or whatever it is. And I came back a better player. I was probably one of the rare players in MLS history to go out on loan. I was on loan for six months. And it was an incredible experience for me because I came back and I had thicker skin. I was a little bit tougher. And I saw the game from a different angle that I had never seen before. So even though Brian Reynolds isn't playing right now, no matter what his next step is, if it's playing full-time for Roma or going into another team somewhere else or a different country, he's going to benefit a ton from this experience, both from a club and hopefully with the U.S. men's national team. So hopefully he does. I don't think he answered my question directly about who he has someone to talk to. Obviously, your family and your friends will be there for you, but they're not in person. And that makes a big difference to have some people. So I hope he's got a nice circle of people in Rome that he can lean on when things aren't going well so that he, to Lucho's point, doesn't feel homesick, doesn't want to leave immediately. I think it seems like right now that he wants to fight through it, and that's a good sign. Yeah, that's a huge point, having a great support system around you so that you can come home after practice or if you've had a bad game and you can hear the right things and maybe build, build up your confidence just that little bit more. That's tremendously important. So Jimmy's got a great point there. And, and similar to Brian, I went to Hamburg when they were in the Champions League and it just I, I kept on hitting a brick wall when I was trying to break into the first team. I just I couldn't quite figure it out. Like, could I make that jump? Was I good enough to make that jump? Playing for the under-23s, it was great, but it's not the first team and it's not the Champions League. It's not the level you want to be at so I eventually had to move away to get exactly what I was craving which to me was more important to play 90 minutes week in and week out than it was to sit on the bench and wait and play three and four minutes here or there 10 minutes or wait for an injury and get another game so it's a big decision that comes up to players who are not playing but Brian's very young. He's got a lot of time on his side. He's in a great place. He's still getting minutes at Roma, which tells you that they really like him. And of course, there will come that time where he needs to force his way into the team. And if it doesn't happen, then he's got to try and find a way to get those regular 90 minutes. But I'm quietly confident that Roma will look after him. Well, it's a great point that you bring up because I think often, as you said, Lucho, we all see the highlight reel and we don't really see the behind the scenes of these players, which you said can be quite isolating sometimes. What were some of the struggles that you had in that initial move to Liverpool and what advice would you give to someone like Brian Reynolds? Yes, of course. Of course, I struggled very much. As you can imagine, arriving to Liverpool where English was the, the language, but they also have an, a special accent. That is Scouse accent. It's very difficult that I think until this day, I still don't understand it very well when I talk to them. Not to Carraga. The Jamie Carraga is no chance that you can understand him. But to adapt to that kind of situation is very, very difficult. To try to, as, uh, as Ian was mentioning, when you learn the language, is finally when you you can start thinking uh, like them, start enjoying like them. You adapt to this whole situation. The food, yeah, the food is okay, it's important, but it's not the same. For me, the most difficult part was when I could talk to them in the way that I wanted when I was on the field, when I was in the training ground, when I was inside the dressing room, because Meanwhile, you couldn't talk, you couldn't laugh, you couldn't have this kind of experience that you have inside the dressing room. The banter that normally we all have, I couldn't understand it. So you cannot be inside the dressing room. So that was the most important uh, moment. And of course, when I got the injury, when I got the injury, you are away from it. You normally don't, uh, you, you are not a part of it, or part of the, of the team. So you struggle a little bit to, to, to that kind of situation. But apart from that, something that I like very much from, from Reno is that he's willing to do whatever it takes to try to get his minutes. And the most important is that he's committed and determined to do it. Because if he said, if I got a chance, I'm going to go for it. So that's the most important. The rest of the thing, you're going to have so many problems during the way. Uh, good days, bad days. But at the end, if you are committed to do it, if you are determined to, to do it, the chance will arrive and you can get it.
Yeah, I agree with Lucho. Attitude is going to determine a lot of people's success in any walk of life. For me, I think what was important during my time over in Poland was establishing a routine. Now, I was very similar to Gianluca Busio because I went with another American teammate on this loan to Lech Poznan. So he you know, has that comfort, has some similarities, is, is walking that same experience or sharing that same experience that he has with Tanner Tessman. And I did the same. But at some point after a month or two in, you're kind of tired of seeing that same guy over and over and over. You want to kind of explore the city and, and establish other relationships that are outside of your bubble. So you're not just thinking about the team all the time. And that's where I was kind of hoping with Brian. Where does he go? Who's our, who are his friends outside of the team? And hopefully he's got that because that's going to be really important. But for me, with regard to routine, I'd go to the same internet cafe. I would just get friendly with some, some locals. And that really helped. You get to see some smiles, you get to see some different faces. And, and that really helped settle me a little bit. And I actually felt like I started to play better once that started to happen. But it took me a while. It took me a month or two. And now that Brian's been there for 18 months, he should have that already in place. And it looks like he's pretty comfortable, all things considered. But if things aren't continuing to go well, we're going to have to probably check back in and see how he's feeling because the mental side of it is super important. You know, our stories are all great, but I feel a little bit for Luis Garcia because not only did he have to go over there and learn English, mm -hmm. he then had to learn Scouse. <laughs> and now, <laughs> when you hear him talk, he's talking a little bit like that, you know what I mean? Like, la. It's a completely different language. I played for Tramie Rovers, which is just over the Mersey from Liverpool, and everyone was speaking so fast, and I speak fast. I grew up in Scotland. So for me, it was just a, another complete language and another complete culture, uh, forgetting learning a foreign language. But you know what helps on everything is making sure you win, and uh, Luis Garcia did pretty well at winning. He <laughs> <laughs> so that totally true. And at the end, trust me that the, it helps when you kind of get the language and learn a little bit. But I can, I can tell you something, and, and it's something that you were mentioning before. In our training ground, when we used to get uh, lunch all together, it was every single day you had a breakfast and, and lunch. And to try to make that adaptation, because we were 16 different nationalities, uh, Rafa Benitez didn't allow us to sit with the same people from the same country. No more than two players from the same country could be in the same table. So at the end, that forced you to try to talk with different people. So I could sit down with Xavi Alonso, but Josemi, Antonio Nunez couldn't be in my table. So at the end, it was a, a good way to force us to, to, to learn the language. If not, it will be a lunch without no words. So it's a good way to try to uh, be implemented in, a, in an area where there are so many different countries, different, different cultures, different languages. So that helped us a lot to try to adapt to, to, to the team, to try to be one part of them and one they realized that we were part of them that was the best connection and that's why the team that that year was so successful let's not forget as well lucho just got back from anfield as well last week so i can slightly hear the scouts coming calm back down, to calm down <laughs> barcelona to <laughs> liverpool lucho i couldn't imagine it to be very different at all but brilliant to have this behind the scenes look and thank you so much to brian reynolds as well for joining us as the US internationals. They're busy playing club football across Europe and we're enjoying following them. Thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.